Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to meeting our family law organizations um, or our family law legal aid organizations. My name is Kendra Thomas, and I am a co-chair of the family law section. Before we begin, a couple of housekeeping announcements. After this program today, you will receive your MCLE certificate shortly after the program. Please take a few minutes to complete the survey and the survey is going to be included with your certificate. We will also be sending out additional program materials at the completion of the program. We look forward to your review of those also. Now a brief word from our sponsors. Our family law section is sponsored by White Zuckerman Warzowski Luna Hunt LLP and our family wizard. White Zuckerman Luna and Hunt provides a variety of resources to complete almost any project, large or small. They also provide traditional accounting and tax practice services. We invite you to contact them to discuss your specific accounting needs and learn how they can be of service to you. And Our Family Wizard is a secure co-parenting platform that supports divorced or separated parents in managing the daily responsibilities of raising children. Specialized features help co-parents organize routines, share files, track expenses, and payments, check in at exchanges, send messages, and more, all while thoroughly documenting their activity. Now, on to our program. Today, I am absolutely thrilled to present you with some of the key individuals who keep our legal aid community in business and flourishing and who we can be working hand in hand with. Without further ado, it is my absolute honor to present, uh, actually earlier this year, she was a guest on direct examination with Dan and Lauren. It is Betty L. Norwind, executive attorney for the Harriet Buhai Center for Family Law. Betty, thank you for being here today. Okay, and thank you, Kendra, for uh, putting on this program. Can you hear me? Absolutely, we can. Okay, and um, good afternoon, everyone. I can't see you, but I, I think you can see me. I'm going to keep our presentation pretty short. You've seen a client story, and Juan, if you can go to page two of the story. Okay, um, what I'm going to do very briefly is tell you about the work of three of your colleagues. Um, as you can see, uh, Beverly Hills Bar Family Law Section member Sandra Mandel was the instrumental attorney on the case that you saw when you when the screen was opened up. And, and really what I'm, I'm just telling you is that everybody can do this. We have a very well-structured, organized, volunteer program when we refer cases to private attorneys pro bono, they are prepared in advance. In this case, and I'll very, very briefly tell you, as you probably saw from the first page, which was up for a while, uh, the husband tried to um, uh, gas our client um, and but for her ingenuity, um, he, she would have died. Um, he also lied to CalPERS and said that he was not married anymore. And so it was a financial case. And Sandra did a beautiful job um, running, running roughshod over the, in a, in a nice way, over a very inexperienced lawyer and got our client a great deal of money. Juan, can you go to page three and four now? In the second case, um, our board member, soon to be co-president of the Harry Buhai Center board on page four is Serene Sasuda. She handled this case a few years ago. Juan, you can go to page four. Um, Serene handled the case where this young boy at the time in high school was suicidal. Um, long story short, he's now a college grad from UC Santa Barbara. Again, my point is that if Serene and Sandra are um, able and you know willing and um, successful in cases, you are too. The third case, which is um, the one I'm about to show you, which is page five and six, one um, is our most recent case. And Nas Nani, who some of you may know, um, helped a client who who's who was the non-custodial parent and the children with the custodial parent dad found a gun in the room that they lived in part-time. 
And she, during the pandemic this past year, went into court and got a change of custody order. Um, and again, these are three individuals, some of whom I'm sure you know. Um, we hope you will consider taking a case. It's a good experience for associates in your office who may be trying to get their CFLS licensure. Um, in lieu of volunteering, we hope you consider making a donation. You can just um, type in our name in Google. You'll get to our website. You can make an online gift. Um, and I just want to thank you for this time and turn it over to my next colleague, which I believe is John Kim. Thank you very much. Thank you, oh. Betty, very, very much, John. Uh, by way of, of introduction of you, I understand that you're working with Asians Americans Advancing Justice LA. We've heard from your organization before. I understand that you're the managing director of client services, including Asian language legal intake, survivor and family empowerment and home preservation. Today, I understand you're gonna be talking to us about um, more of the SAFE program, the Survivor and Family Empowerment. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, I am going to post our brochure uh, on the chat box, if I could find it. <laughs> okay. And thank you. Uh, so uh, I am, uh, as uh, Kendra mentioned, I am from Asian Americans Advancing Justice. Uh, we, our main uh, services are limited to limited English speaking Asian immigrants uh, who are the survivors of domestic violence. And uh, we have a full-time staff, a bilingual staff who could cover different uh, Asian languages such as Cantonese, Mandarin, Korean, Thai, Tagalog, and Vietnamese. And we are, soon, uh, we are adding Hindi pretty soon. And a uh, majority of our cases, of course, is uh, assisting clients with uh, no English or limited English skill who needs to uh, navigate through the court system and the divorce process. And a lot of times it normally, uh, and our priority is the survivor of domestic violence. So that's the prerequisite for our cases. And we have uh, currently we have uh, two attorneys, uh, full time attorneys, and uh, one assistant uh, who's handling the cases. And if you know anyone who wants to uh, work for public interest, helping uh, these clients, please let me know because uh, we I am trying to hire more people and I'm having a hard time. I think it's the same with a lot of people here. <laughs> and uh, Due to the pandemic, uh, we used to have in-person clinics uh, and with uh, other community-based organizations, but due to the pandemics, uh, we are doing things virtually and most of the cases by the referrals. And hopefully in the new year, we could do uh, in-person clinics or even regular virtual clinics. And that's where I think uh, we could get a lot of help with the uh, pro bono attorneys who could uh, provide with the counsel and advice. And uh, due to the capacity uh, right now, uh, we are, I guess, by case by case basis, but we don't have regular program for pro bono attorneys to help us. But uh, I am planning to have, I'm hoping to provide uh, people who need court experiences, your associate attorneys uh, with the hearings, especially the domestic violence restraining order hearings and such. So please contact me if you are interested in that. And of course, you know, we are seeking uh, donations to help for help. Uh, but yes, and we have been, I, I guess for on a monthly basis, we've been uh, handling about 30 to 40 cases uh, in family law, and that is on the law side. And uh, I'm sure it's going to increase in the future. And uh, I hope uh, you, know, you could uh, join us in uh, assisting the community. And uh, you don't have to worry about the language capacity because we have bilingual staff who will do translations for you. So if you're interested, uh, please uh, you know, let me know. And thank you for joining. Thank you, John. 
Next, I am very, very excited that we have Juliana Lee with us. Juliana, I am I'm thrilled that you're here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and how we can help you? Yes, um, thank you. Let me just share my screen quickly. Okay, is that showing my PowerPoint hopefully? It is, and we are seeing the Legal Aid Foundation of okay. Los Angeles in front of us right now. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Kendra, for organizing this and to the Beverly Hills Bar um, for um, just your interest in meeting the Family Law Legal Aids. Um, I'm Juliana Lee from the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles. Um, I'm a supervising attorney here and uh, lead our family law and domestic violence practice. Um, so some of you may already know uh, a little bit about LAFLA, but we are a frontline legal services provider uh, in greater Los Angeles um, and have been here for over 90 years. Um, LAFLA's work spans many areas of law. So in addition to family law, our office assists clients with eviction defense, housing, government benefits, immigration, employment, expungements, and advocacy around reentry services and homelessness. Uh, we also have programs that work with specific communities, uh, such as the Veterans Justice Center, the Asian Pacific Islander Project, and three medical legal partnerships. Um, uh, we have five offices throughout the county, uh, so Santa Monica, East LA, South LA, Long Beach, and uh, downtown. Um, we also partner with the court to run the self-help centers out of four branch courts. Um, in mid-March of 2020, uh, we created a domestic violence hotline and shifted from our three court-based domestic violence clinics to remote assistance via a central Zoom and phone-based hotline. I think probably a lot of others made this change. Um, and since then, we've been preparing domestic violence restraining orders, ex parte request for orders, and other family law uh, pleadings on our hotline by phone and Zoom. Uh, many of our clients have limited tech resources and language barriers and need assistance kind of navigating the many changes and updates that have occurred with the court. Um, and so in addition to the filing itself, we are helping a lot of our clients with kind of related needs, so including kind of preparing for remote hearings, communicating um, about administrative matters with the court, um, kind of forwarding electronic copies of conform documents and their other filings, um, filing fee waiver requests, and now with e-filing. Um, as of last month, uh, LAFLA has returned to two of our court-based clinics uh, for in-person services at the Stanley Moss Courthouse, um, that's in the Restraining Order Center on the second floor, and in the Long Beach Courthouse. Uh, we are in court on Mondays and Wednesdays, and providing remote assistance through our hotline um, on Fridays. Um, so as you might expect, we provide assistance with most types of family law cases and the various kinds of you know, pleadings that I think, um, you know, that we see in family court. Um, assisting domestic violence survivors is a priority for LAFLA, and it's particularly a priority in our family law practice. Um, all of our clients are low income, many of them if not most are on either CalWORKs or some other form of a government benefit. Um, on top of the challenges and struggles of poverty and systemic oppression, our clients often have a lot of unaddressed and untreated trauma related to the abuse they suffered. And so kind of in addition to our roles as family law attorneys, we also see ourselves as advocates for our client communities uh, whose voices are curtailed and who aren't kind of provided equal access to justice within the legal system. So as one example of an advocacy effort, I wanted to share with you a pilot we started in collaboration with the LA's uh, city attorney's office, the LA mayor's office, um, and our family justice center partners last year. Um, and I also wanna show you this because also present pro bono opportunities that may be of interest to you. So one of the major tech innovations by the court during the pandemic was the creation of LA Court Connect and the ability to make remote appearances for hearings. And while convenient and useful uh, for attorneys and resource litigants, remote hearings increase the kind of the digital divide for our clients. 
Uh, and so to bring more meaningful and safe access to the court's remote options, we designed a studio to provide DV survivors with a safe, supportive, private and reliable space to appear remotely for restraining order hearings. Um, the studio is located within the Family Justice Center, which is at the LAC USC Medical Campus. Um, and you know, it has kind of multiple benefits and services there, in addition to kind of the public health benefits um, that come with the pandemic. Um, but it permits survivors to litigate without facing their abusers in person. Uh, doing so spares them kind of the exacerbation of, of kind of their already overwhelming feelings of anxiety, fear, and trauma. Uh, we do have security at the Family Justice Center and the access inside is monitored. Um, and then a studio that's in the Family Justice Center offers a trauma-informed environment with advocates who are present to provide both technical and emotional support. So one recent survivor who used the studio told us she felt supported and respected um, by all the FJC staff and appreciated having an advocate stay with her so that she didn't have to be alone during an understandably stressful hearing. Um, so, and also for survivors, the studio, studio can mean less travel, less time off work and easier childcare through our FJC partners who are able to offer transportation vouchers and other supportive services to survivors. Uh, so if you're interested in providing pro bono assistance, of course you can do it in person at one of our clinics or by representing a client in court, um, or you can do it remotely via, uh, you know, helping with pleadings on our domestic violence hotline or through remote appearances for hearings uh, with your client potentially appearing through this studio. Uh, so this leads me to my pitch in asking you to lend your resources and expertise to LAFLA, our clients in the community. Uh, whether you're able to commit half or a full day to the hotline, help draft a pleading, represent a survivor on a restraining order or other family law matter, or provide technical assistance to us on an issue, we encourage you to get in touch. Uh, it's not uncommon for us to have clients uh, who have no income themselves, but who are married to or have children with someone with means. So in these cases there are issues of attorney's fees, spousal support, property, retirement, enforcement and discovery. Uh, having a connection to the private family law bar for assistance and support on these kinds of issues um, is wonderful. We recently co-counseled a case with uh, a member of the, of the private family bar on a case and, and, it, and with a really great outcome. Um, and it was also reflected really well with the court to see that um, legal services was able to partner with the private bar to help a, a low-income survivor. Um, so Laughlin has a long pro bono history, whether it's partnering with large firms or individual attorneys. We have a dedicated pro bono team that works hard to streamline the process. Uh, we recognize that taking on a pro bono matter is a commitment and one that takes up your time and resources. So we try to provide some benefits to volunteering with us. And of course, as you already know, helping a survivor who would otherwise not be able to afford legal assistance, obtain critical protection and secure custody is rewarding in countless ways. It can change the course of your client's life, restore some faith and sense of justice in the legal system, and demonstrate the difference an attorney can make to an outcome in a case. Um, and if I may make one more plug, LAFLA leads the Family Law Coalition, a group of about 40 to 50 domestic violence and family law legal services attorneys who work at um, actually all of the organizations you see here and more. Uh, we work at nonprofits and in general, sort of the same population of low-income survivors. Um, we often share resources with each other. In addition to taking on cases and clients, um, the, there are some other ways you can contribute to our work and make a significant contribution. So the Family Law Coalition hosts meetings throughout the year where we invite judges to meet with us and host presentations by practitioners on discrete topics. These have included presentations about the role of minors counsel, uh, stimulus checks, preparing judgment packages, quadros, child support, et cetera. Um, so this is a great way to share your expertise and get to know the family law legal services community. Um, and we would welcome you at, at any kind of family law coalition meeting or gathering or, or presentation. Um, and if you'd like more information about LAFLA, please see our website. You can find our annual report along with our resources and materials. We also created a booklet on the DV restraining order process and other issues earlier this year. 
um, and it's available in different languages. Um, it is designed as a kind of a clear and helpful resources, resource for survivors and advocates. Um, and we provide this to clients we see in our in-person clinics um, and it's also on our website. Um, and last, thank you very much. This is my contact information. It would be great to hear from you. Um, and thank you again for having me. Thank you so much, Juliana. That was amazing. Um, I know that there were some comments in the chat about how some of those phone numbers went through quite quickly. Subsequent to this program, we will be getting all of you viewers out there some materials. So these very important numbers that you're seeing flash across your screen, you will have, have them in hard copy because we are excited to get you engaged and absolutely active. Next, I am thrilled to present Sonia Shakuri of the Los Angeles Center for Law and Justice. Sonia, please, please introduce yourself and tell us all what you do and how we can help. Hi, Kendra. Thank you so much uh, for putting this together and for having us. My name is Sonia Shakuri, and I'm a staff attorney here at LACLJ. Before I start, I just want to apologize for my voice. I'm still recovering from a bit of a cold, um, but I'm going to do the best I can here. Just to tell you a little bit about our organization. So the Los Angeles Center for Law and Justice is a small nonprofit organization that focuses on gender-based violence. Our mission is to secure justice for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault and empower them to create their own futures. We provide free legal services to survivors throughout Los Angeles County. And a little bit of background, we were founded in 1973 and we provided legal advocacy to low income and primarily immigrant populations in Los Angeles for over 40 years. In its early years, the organization played a historic role in a range of social justice issues related to racial discrimination, police brutality, school desegregation, and the illegal involuntary sterilization of Latina women. Over time, the agency evolved to focus on direct legal services and beginning in the late 1990s, greatly expanded its work for victims of domestic violence. We strive to provide survivors with client-centered services, which are holistic, trauma-informed, culturally responsive, and collaborative. We are holistic in that we recognize that the client is part of many systems, such as family and community, social services, and various legal systems. Throughout our integrated service model, in addition to meeting the client's various legal needs, we provide clients with safety planning, accompaniment, case management, and social service referrals through, through our community advocates program. We take a trauma-informed approach in that we provide services in a way that is accessible and appropriate for survivors of trauma respecting and responding to the effects of trauma at all points in the process. We're culturally responsive in that we respect that the client's experience is influenced by their cultural, religious, social, socioeconomic, and historical customs, beliefs, values, and community, and that our clients are unique people who identify with intersecting cultures. And we are collaborative in that we acknowledge that the client is really the expert in their own lives. Low-income survivors, as you may imagine, usually cannot afford a lawyer and do not have equal access to justice. We wanna make sure that every survivor has meaningful access to legal representation, no matter their socioeconomic background. And attorneys provide invaluable pro bono services to our clients every day. Currently, LACLJ's pro bono opportunities include limited scope representation of domestic violence survivors at their hearings and trials in restraining order cases, or in reviewing the preparation of restraining orders by shelter advocates. LACLJ staff attorneys are available for training and support of pro bono attorneys. And if you're looking for other practice areas, for example, I'm currently working with a pro bono attorney on a Title IX matter. Uh, we filed a lawsuit against a school who failed to properly investigate a Title IX report of sexual assault that involved a professor. So if you're looking for a certain type of case or want to gain experience in a certain practice area, please let us know. We'll definitely work with you on finding that case for you. And if you're interested in volunteering with us, you can email us at probono at laclj.org. You could be added to our pro bono list. And if you have any further questions about volunteering with us, shoot, just shoot us an email. And this is where my pitch comes about donations. Your donations give low-income survivors 
free legal representation in and outside of the courtroom. Your support, you can help survivors and their families access justice, connect to community resources, and establish a safer and hopeful future. We accept online donations at our website, laclj.org. Um, and we also have a sponsorship opportunity for events like our upcoming Empower Run, where we raise funds via virtual 5K or 10K in February. You can get more information again at our website. This past year, we've served 900 survivors, and next year we're hoping to reach over 1,200 with the support of donors and pro bono attorneys. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Thank Sonia. You. Next, I am thrilled to introduce Rebecca Miller, a supervising attorney for an organization very close to my heart. And Ms. Miller also runs the volunteer program. Great. Thank you so much, Kendra, and thank you for having us. Um, assuming everything works here, I was going to kick it off with a short video. So we'll see if that works, and then I'll jump in after that. Working at Levitt and Quinn, we are all on board for what the mission is, and the mission is to serve the client. I think we all get so much out of being involved. It's joyful, really. We've all played a part in changing people's lives. I don't know too many things better than that. Great, so that's just a little intro about us and the type of work that we do. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Working at so Levitt Quinn Family Law Center, we're a nonprofit organization. We just celebrated our 40 year anniversary and we offer both free and sliding scale family law services for poor and modest means families who are not able to get help from other legal aid providers or at the same time not able to pay for a private attorney. So a lot of the clients that we see are ones who kind of fill, um, fall through the cracks where they make a little bit too much to qualify for traditional legal services, um, but at the same time, do not have the resources um, to pay private attorney fees. And we offer limited scope services, including paperwork preparation and direct representation all throughout Los Angeles County. Um, our attorneys typically make over 300 court appearances per year collectively as a group. So we really try to prioritize being able to stand beside our clients in court and provide them with that valuable legal assistance. And next slide. So just to kind of go through a few things. First of all, I just want to provide everyone with information about if they have any prospective clients that come through their door that they're not able to assist and they want to send them our way. So our website, which is levittquinn.org, is our hub for pretty much everything. There is an online intake form that um, people can submit on there. And from there, we have a $45 intake fee. And from there, we'll let clients know what the cost would be for future services. We do have some funds for free services or what the fees would be on our sliding scale. We handle a wide range of family law issues, including adoption, um, support, custody and visitation, dissolution, domestic violence, and parentage cases. So pretty much the full gamut of family law cases. Um, we also have several volunteer opportunities. So one opportunity that people typically like as a starting point is our clinics, which are all being held virtually. Those are a three to four hour time commitment where volunteers can conduct client intake and give advice and next steps um, to the people that we're meeting with. We have one focused on veterans and another focused on survivors of domestic violence. Um, we also offer a wide range of volunteer opportunities, including pro bono placement um, and other assistance with more limited scope services. Um, our website has our volunteer application there, and it also has the email address, which is volunteer at levittquinn.org, which does get sent to me to follow up for um, if anyone who's interested in volunteering. Um, and just lastly, I will give a pitch kind of for our end of year campaign. Um, we are this end of year focusing our fundraising on our Beulah Fund which provides free services to adults age 55 and older who are low income or adult disabled parents. So both of those populations are typically very vulnerable and a lot of times have ac uh, difficulties accessing services. So our Beulah Fund allows us to provide services to them free of charge and we would greatly appreciate your support in that mission. Um, all of our information about donations is also available on our website. 
Um, thank you so much, Kendra, for putting this on and for all of you for attending and happy holidays. Thank you, Rebecca. Next, I'm excited to introduce you to Yami Flores of Neighborhood Legal Services of Los Angeles County. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so Neighborhood Legal Services is a full legal services agency that uh, has that we practice in uh, the Antelope Valley, San Fernando Valley, and San, G <clears throat> San Gabriel Valley. We do, uh, you know, go into court in Pasadena, Pomona, Antelope Valley, Chatsworth and Van Nuys, and also Stanley Mosque. Um, we do offer a wide range of possibilities for assistance. We have the self-help centers, and um, right now mo they're virtual and in-person. Uh, the self-help centers are located in the Antelope Valley, in uh, Chatsworth, Van Nuys, and Pomona courthouses. Um, if you would like to volunteer through those, you can assist in preparing uh, documents for restraining orders or uh, divorce or paternity petitions or requests for orders. Um, and those you can have morning or afternoon shifts or all day if you choose to do that. Um, if you, uh, and I'll, you can do that virtually uh, via, um, usually what we do is phone calls to prepare the documents for, for people who, who are tech savvy. Um, but we do, uh, well, right now the court isn't allowing us to have anyone else in the self-help centers. So for now it's just virtual. Otherwise we do offer um, full uh, assistance. So, and it will depend on, on what you guys would like to do. So for example, if you prefer to just provide clients with um, counsel and advice, um, you know, that, that could be the extent of the services or very limited services in either preparing documents or uh, representing someone only at a hearing or only at a, uh, you know, at a specific part, uh, you know, for quadro or whatnot, uh, instead of a full on, taking on a full on divorce. And we can assist in preparing the documents or prepar preparing, uh, providing secretarial support or paralegal support um, and have uh, the attorneys just go into court and represent the client. We can also act as second chair, especially for those who are new and would like, uh, you know, kind of like someone to hold your hand and assist in, especially if you're, if you want to get more um, experience representing people in court. And just like everybody else, we are accepting donations so that we can provide more services to everyone. I, I believe that we assisted over 100,000 people as an organization this year. Um, and, you know, the more, the more we, funds we have available, the more we are able to assist people who, you know, are, could not afford an attorney. Uh, and you can donate at neighborhoodlegalservices.org or nlsla.org. And I can put that in the chat. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. That is, that is absolutely wonderful. Thank you everyone for being here today and kind of fleshing out for us what you do. Um, I do have a few follow-up questions for each of you and everyone listening out there, if you have some questions, now is a wonderful time for you to also ask your, your inquiries. But John, starting with you, you had mentioned that you're looking for pro bono attorneys. What are, what are you looking for right now and how can we send people your way to fill the need of what you're looking for? Uh, I guess right now, uh, someone who could provide counsel and advice to the clients, of course. And also, if you're willing to take the case from the start of request for a restraining order to the hearing, that would be great too, of course. And, uh, and uh, to reach us, basically, I, I did post my email, but uh, you, know, you could call me directly or email me directly to, um, to do pro bono services. We do have a pro bono account, uh, pro bono chair, uh, Christina Yang, uh, who also takes care of all the logistics. But case-wise, I will be the person to uh, contact. Wonderful. And your pro bono attorneys, would they be working in person? Would they be working virtually? Uh, right now, it's uh, I leave it up to their discretion. So some people, when they feel comfortable, for example, personally, I had a lot of tech issues when I was trying to do remote hearings. So I made it a point to do everything in person 
but you know, I, I leave it up to their discretion. They could do uh, remote or uh, in person. And as we're traversing out there and we're meeting people, who is a good client for us to be sending to your organization? Uh, to, to our organization, of course. Uh, you know, as you know, we are nonprofit, so we cannot handle any uh, complicated property issues. So it would be more uh, survival of domestic violence, low income with a limited uh, language capacity that would be the main clientele that we've been serving. Wonderful, wonderful. Juliana, similar question for you. As we're working out there and coming in contact with people, who is a good client for us to be sending your way? Um, yeah, you know, um, essentially our eligibility criteria is, um, is, is pretty basic. I mean, um, kind of 200, at 200 or below um, percent of federal poverty. Um, and uh, for specifically for family law assistance, we, we try to prioritize survivors of domestic violence, whether they've experienced abuse currently or just in the past. Um, and yeah, so I mean, you know, we're pretty broad serving kind of low income communities, any language, um, regardless, uh, um, you know, kind of, of lots of, you know, like kind of greater Los Angeles. Um, we do both in-person and um, virtual assistance right now. So um, it, one good place to start potentially could be our, our, um, our main hotline number. Um, and then they could probably be routed um, depending on the issue. If it's specifically for domestic violence or family law, we have a domestic violence hotline number. And are there any prerequisites you're looking for in terms of attorneys that are looking to donate time to your organization? No, no, not really. I think, you know, our, our program for volunteers is very flexible. So whether or not you want to make it kind of a reoccurring thing and help out on our domestic violence hotline or at a clinic, um, or if you just know you're gonna have, you know, a discrete amount of time available to take on a case, um, I, th I think we're really open um, and kind of appreciative of any kind of time people are willing to donate. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Sonia, turning my attention to you now, um, you had made a plug right before closing regarding the Empower Run. W what is that run and how can we help? <laughs> um, I'm not a runner, so I don't know much about it, but... <laughs> You can definitely find out more information about it on our website, laclj.org. Because of the pandemic still kind of going on, it's going to be a virtual run. So I think the way that it works is everyone does their run on their own time. Um, but, um, you know, we all kind of get together and raise money towards our run. I'm happy to put the information in the chat or send it over by email so everyone can get it. Wonderful. I'm happy to include it in the materials, but you're definitely welcome to put it in chat. And for those of us like me who may not be up to running virtually or otherwise right now, um, what would you be looking for in terms of your volunteers or attorneys who are looking to donate some time to you? Uh, as Juliana mentioned, our pro bono program is also very flexible. Um, we are really looking for anyone who's passionate about helping survivors um, gain meaningful access to justice. And you know, if you want experience with client interaction, if you want courtroom experience, if you're just looking to you know, get some experience in a certain practice area, whatever it may be, um, we're happy to work with you and find a case that's best suited for you. And I also note here that when you were speaking, you mentioned limited scope representation on domestic violence cases. Is that usually in um, helping prepare paperwork or is that usually after the paperwork is already filed, looking for someone to go into court with the individual seeking protection? Yeah, it's usually after all the paperwork has been filed and um, clients are looking for representation at a hearing. So you provide limited scope representation um, in representing the client at the restraining order hearing. This is, might be a strange question and I throw it out to everyone. And I know we, we do a lot of work for um, individuals seeking restraining orders. Do your agencies offer representation for individuals seeking to defend against restraining orders? 
Yami, I see you nodding over there. Yes, we do. Um, you know, it's not unheard of that the abuser will file a restraining order against the abuse party in order to gain an advantage in custody or as a way to, con to use the court to continue to harass the abuser. So, you know, the we we hear everybody out. And if we determine that the respondent is the actually the abused party, we will assist them in defending a restraining order. Or also if if uh, there's mutual restraining orders, if, if one person filed and then the other person filed, we'll also assist in those type of cases as well. Awesome. Right, uh, it's, yeah, we also do that. Of course, it's case by case basis and depending on the facts, since uh, there is, also of our immigration issues involved, we analyze each cases before deciding uh, whether or not we could represent that person. Wonderful. And for Levitt Quinn as well, we will represent either side in a restraining order, either the petitioner or the respondent. Um, and there's no sort of, we don't have a requirement that it's the victim that's getting the restraining order filed against them. If there's a defense to be made will take on those cases as well. Very nice, very nice. I believe the same holds true for our organization. Sorry, Sonia, was that you saying the same position for your organization? Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. For, uh, you trailed off a little, so I want to make sure that everyone else was able to hear you. And Juliana, okay. I see you nodding up there. Um, how does LAFLA handle situations where there may be either competing restraining orders or do people come to you saying hi I want to defend against a restraining order or what is what happens there yeah uh, well so like I think others we also represent kind of on um, you know whether respondents and petitioners um, uh, and kind of aside from the conflict check that I think all of us are, are required to do um, we do prioritize serving survivors so um, we, um, you know, survivors can be, of course, on, on both sides of a case. Um, and the reason we prioritize survivors in our family law practice is because, um, you know, there's kind of a dearth of resources for low income litigants, and then even a smaller one for survivors who are low income. So um, that's kind of our focus. Um, and there's kind of still a dearth of resources for survivors um, in terms of legal services, but we do we do prioritize serving survivors regardless of what um, kind of uh, whether they're on any particular side of the case. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Rebecca, I have a question for you next. You had mentioned that volunteers are looking for three to four hour time commitments. Are there any prerequisites for your volunteers if they're willing to, to donate that that block of time to you, what do you require them to have on board before they come to you? Yes, thank you. And so to clarify, the three to four hour time commitment is for our virtual clinics, which is just one of our more popular volunteer opportunities because it's a good starting point to get to know our organization and our clients. So for those, it's simply a matter of completing our volunteer application. Um, sometimes we do fill up with capacity and we have more volunteers than we can support for a clinic. Um, but aside from that, we will do a short orientation and training in advance of the clinic to get you familiar with the clinic format and how it works. Um, for people who might be newer to family law, we also include kind of a family law basics component so that you have some knowledge heading into the clinic. Um, but aside from that, for the clinics, that's the only requirement. And then we do have other volunteer opportunities, including pro bono cases that can be more of a long term time commitment. Um, but all the cases we take are limited scope. So any task taken on by a volunteer would be limited in nature to whatever specific task they're agreeing to assist with, whether that be paperwork or representation at a hearing. And is there any type of recurring nature to the volunteer aspect or can it be tailored to the amount of time or um, attention that a volunteer can give at that time? Yes, our volunteer program is very flexible in terms of time commitment. We have clinics all throughout the year, so there's typically about one a month. Um, we have some volunteers who do them on a monthly basis, some who might do once a year, um, and then same thing in terms of other volunteering. Some people may um, have time to give to one discrete task, or some may want to do it on a more ongoing basis, and we're open to all of that. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Now, Yami, I wanted to turn my next question over to you. Um, 
you had mentioned a very interesting opportunity that if an attorney is interested in getting experience, you guys would act as kind of a second chair. Can you go into that a little more? That sounds like an amazing opportunity. How does that work? Um, so that's correct. So we can, it, it depends on, on what the, the attorney wants practice in. So either we assist in prepping the client or we are with the uh, pro bono in assisting to prep the client for the trial, for example, for a restraining order, for a request for order, but usually it's for a restraining order. Um, and then at the restraining order hearing, it would be the pro bono who you know, we'll be the first chair, uh, but we'll be there for assistance in case they have any questions or we feel that, you know, we, we need to object to something or do something really quickly. We're there to assist and to provide uh, guidance and support during the hearing as well. So is that usually a more experienced attorney then from your organization who attends that hearing? Yes. Although, uh, so we have four family law attorneys and um, there's one that's only been with us for, I think, two years now. It's going to be two years in March. She started right before, like the week before the pandemic started. Um, and then uh, everyone else has been practicing for at least four years. So we, we do, most of our family law attorneys are, have been practicing for a while. Um, so it would be with one of those that have been practicing for, for a very long time. Very neat, very neat. And what um, prerequisite or background do you look for in your pro bono attorneys or people looking to volunteer time? Uh, there's no prerequisite. It's usually, you know, whatever time people can, like I said, it could be something as simple as counsel and advice, as preparing uh, temporary restraining orders, or pre preparing a request for order, or, you know, up to uh, representing someone at a hearing. So it depends on the time that the pro bono has available to assist uh, an individual. So we don't put any maximums or limits on um, the amount of time that they can, um, that they can assist. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I thank everyone for sharing your, your opportunities with all of us. Are there any closing plugs that anyone would like to make in terms of how we can continue to assist um, or anything that you'd be looking for either as we close out this calendar year. Part of the reason that I love that we do this in December is because I know that some of our firms are very charitable. They're looking for that tax deduction. Um, you guys work with some amazing, I don't need to tell you how amazing your, your firms are and how just foundational they are to what we even do in the private sector. So thank you for, for working so hard. And thank you for finding ways to let us give back and work with you. I know I myself have donated uh, time and energy to some of your organizations and it, there's nothing more rewarding. They're really in my humble opinion than being able to, to work with some clients and work with some of your attorneys and, and even you all. Does anyone have any final remarks or final pitches they'd like to make? Uh, for since we could only serve uh, low-income families, uh, sometimes we get calls since you know, we speak their language, people who don't qualify for a service, but will need family law assistance. So if you could, you know, uh, if you want to be on our referral list, that, you know, just please uh, email me or let me know uh, about the cases you would handle. That is amazing. Thank you, John. Um, and I know that I would be happy to pass along names and act as a conduit for anyone in our organization who's interested in jumping in on any, any referral list. Do any of your other organizations out there, in addition to John's, have lists or names of attorneys that you keep who maybe are looking for, for opportunities as they come up for you to refer to? Um, yeah, so NLSLA does have a list of attorneys that we do, that we refer clients to. Uh, also, pro bonos that we know that we can call in. Um, we've worked with them a lot, um, especially here in the San Fernando Valley and in the Antelope Valley, which I know, um, especially the Antelope Valley and, and uh, in Pomona usually don't have as many attorneys assisting out there. And those, again, those can be virtual or in person since the court is allowing uh, for remote appearances. Wonderful. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, sorry, if I could add, we also have, you know, a short list of private family law attorneys who we refer clients, uh, particularly if 
they no longer become eligible for our services or if there are opportunities for, um, especially for them to get representation on the private side and seek attorney's fees because the other side uh, um, has the resources to cover such fees. Um, and it would be great if we could expand that list. We generally uh, refer people to pro bono attorneys who we've worked with. Um, and um, it's always good to provide clients with more options. And if there are attorneys out there who are willing to provide more kind of a low bono rate, um, you know, of course that would be um, extremely helpful to know too. Thank I you. love that low bono. I I think that's that's a wonderful term, <laughs> especially for some of us who have offered or found a way to unbundle services and offer them at lower rates. So, th thank yep. you for for thinking so out of the box on this. Any other final plugs for us? I am again thrilled that everyone was able to join us. Thank you for taking time out of your lunch hours during the holiday season. And if there are no final remarks, then I will wish everyone the happiest of holidays on the panel. Thank you again and happy holidays to everyone watching. I look to see everyone in the new year. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, have a great holiday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.